You know, people say, this guy worships his wife. Have you ever heard that statement? This guy worships his wife. I see a lot of brothers saying yes, you know. Uh, that is not, the meaning of it is not worship as in rendering an act of worship for. No, all it means is he obeys his wife's instructions. That's what it means. And I can give you on a lighter note, and I really like this because it plugs in. We are all human beings and we like a little bit of, you know, humor sometimes. They say there was a king and he called all his subjects, the males, and he says, anyone who is ruled by his wife, come in this line. And whoever rules his wife, where, you know, the instructions are not obeyed, so to speak, or they come from you as a man, then you stand in this line. So the whole community stood in the wrong line. Allahu Akbar. They all stood in a line saying, no, if my wife sees me in the other line, I'm dead meat. You see? So what happened is, they all got one egg each, an egg. They were given one egg. And there was one man who stood in the line. I'm the man. You know, in the house, I'm the man. So the king was so happy, at least amongst my subjects, there is one man who has such greatness, you know, meaning he has the quality, Rujula, you know, he's a man, you know. So now the king gave him a horse, brown horse. And the, in fact, the king told him, choose from the horses you want. So he chose the brown one and left the black one. And he rode home, galloping away. Everyone else went home with one egg. So when he got home, his wife, he looked at her and says, you know what? She says, what? Today I got a horse because I'm the boss. You see, I got a horse because I'm the boss. She says, okay, that's good. Excellent. So you're the boss. So he says, you know, I was told to choose from three horses. There was a white one, a black one, and this brown one that I've actually come with. This was the best one. She says, wow, you look great in it. You look great in this horse, but you'd look greater in the black one. He says, well, not a problem. I had a choice. I can go back and get the black one. So he goes back galloping to the castle. And he says, oh king, the king says, yes, what's happening? He says, I just want to swap my horse. He says, why? When I went home, my wife told me that you'd look better in the black horse. The king says, no problem. He took the horse and gave him one egg. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So the moral of this story is obedience. We're talking of obedience. People say you worship someone when you obey them. You know, people say this man worships his wife because he obeys. Wallahi, we don't even understand that the example of Allah is higher. We can never ever equate Allah with any human being. But we need to know that ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also connected to obeying His instructions. And Allah will not tell you to do something that is detrimental for you. He won't. Whatever Allah has instructed you to do, and whatever He has asked you to abstain from, all of that is for your benefit, O oh man. Why is it that we want to look at it and think that this is very difficult when if someone were to tell us to do something that is not beneficial for us because we love them, we might end up doing it. Why is it that we don't show higher love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala?